In this problem, we're testing the convergence of an interesting series. So we have n minus 1 to the n in the numerator, n plus 2 to the n in the denominator. Why not use the root test so that we can undo the nth power? So in the root test, we're investigating the limit as n goes to infinity, nth root of the nth term. And if this comes out to a number less than 1, we get absolute convergence. If it's greater than 1, we get divergence. And if it's equal to 1, it's inconclusive. So let's see what happens here. The nth root undoes the nth power, and I have this simple limit of a rational function now. Well, the highest power of n dominates the numerator and denominator. More formally, you could divide the top and bottom by n, and you'll get the same result. This reduces to 1, and I end up with 1 for my limit. Well, that's the case where the root test is inconclusive, so that didn't help at all. So instead of looking at it that way, I go back and look at my original series. And I'm thinking to myself, that thing in parentheses is getting really close to 1. It's the exact same limit we just took over here. And then I'm raising it to a really large power. Well, if I'm taking something pretty close to 1 and raising it to a really large power, it kind of makes me think that my terms might be going to something finite here. In other words, that I might fail the divergence test. And so that's my next thing to try. In order for a series to converge, the terms must be shrinking to zero as n becomes large. So I'm going to test this limit. And one of the first manipulations that comes to mind is to divide the top and bottom of that rational expression by n. And when I do that, I start to see things that look a little bit familiar. Now this can be split up into the limit as n goes to infinity, 1 minus 1 over n to the n over 1 plus 2 over n to the n. Now keep in mind that e is the limit of 1 plus 1 over n to the n. So both of these things look very similar to e. And in fact, you can manipulate both of these limits and turn them into powers of e. Well, the limit of a fraction is just the fraction of the limits. So I'm going to look at them one at a time. And there's two different ways to handle this. One is by doing substitutions to manipulate the limit. And the other is to give a name to this limit and then take the natural log of both sides. So on this first limit, I'm going to do it both ways. And I'll start by giving it a name. And then I take the natural log of both sides. And because the natural log is continuous, it can move inside the limit. And I'm going to go ahead and use the exponent properties of natural logs. And if I look at the argument of the natural log function here, 1 minus 1 over n, well, 1 over n is getting close to 0, so that's getting close to the natural log of 1, which is 0. So this is an infinity times 0 indeterminate form. I'm going to use L'Hopital's rule on this. And notice that I switched from an n to an x because I'm about to take derivatives. So switching into a form that's useful for L'Hopital's rule, I get natural log 1 minus 1 over x over 1 over x. Now the numerator and denominator are both getting close to 0 as x becomes large, so I can use L'Hopital's rule, differentiate the numerator, and I get 1 over 1 minus 1 over x times the derivative of 1 minus 1 over x, which is going to give me a positive 1 over x squared. In the denominator, I have a negative 1 over x squared. So my x squareds cancel, and I have the limit as x goes to infinity, negative 1 over 1 minus 1 over x. Now 1 over x is getting close to 0, so this is all going to negative 1. So I have the natural log of y on one side is equal to negative 1. Well, now I can solve for y and write y equals e to the negative 1. Now there's an alternative way of doing this limit. And it's actually really tricky. If there was a plus there, it's not so bad. But with a minus, it's not easy. So the issue is this. If I tried to simply say let m equal negative n, and my motivation here is to change the inside of these parentheses to look like the definition of e as 1 plus 1 over something to an enormous power, something goes wrong with the limit. All right, the inside of the parentheses look great. And then my exponent is going to be a negative m. But the issue here is my limit no longer goes to infinity. If m is negative n, then m is going to negative infinity. And I don't really have a way of getting the definition of e out of this. So that's kind of a dead end. So what I'm going to do is give a little bit of background. 
and say there's a new way to write the definition of E. And I can make a substitution on this and say let K equal 1 over N. Then as N goes to infinity, K goes to 0. So I have that E can be written as the limit as K goes to 0. 1 plus K and then in my exponent, n is 1 over k, so I have to the 1 over k power. So this gives me an alternative way of writing down the definition of e. This is really useful for the limit that we're stuck on. I can say let k equal negative 1 over n. That means the exponent n would be negative 1 over k. It also means my n goes to infinity limit becomes a k goes to 0 limit. So you get the limit as k goes to 0 of 1 plus k to the negative 1 over k. This looks a lot like our new definition of e. I just have to write it as a fraction. Limit as k goes to 0, 1 over 1 plus k to the 1 over k. That denominator I now recognize as e, and I get 1 over e, which is e to the negative 1. So same answer. All right, so I brought our conclusion onto a new slide, and we were also trying to tackle this other limit that's E related, one plus two over N to the N. This one, you could use the logarithm method, and I'll let you do that on your own. I wanted to illustrate the substitution method. So what I want is a one plus one over something to a large power, so I'm gonna make the substitution. Let M equal N over two, that means 1 over m is 2 over n. So I'm trying to replace 2 over n with a 1 over m. My exponent now becomes 2m. And as n becomes large, m becomes large. So I have a limit as m goes to infinity. 1 plus 2 over n, but that's 1 over m. And then my exponent becomes 2m. And I could write that. as the limit of 1 plus 1 over m to the m, all squared, and the thing in the brackets there is just e, so I get e squared. So finally, and what we were doing here again is using the divergence test on a series, so I took the limit of this argument. I've now successfully got the limit of the numerator and the denominator, and I get e to the negative 1 over e squared which is e to the negative 3 or 1 over e cubed. And because this is a finite number, it means the terms of our series are not getting close to 0 as n becomes large, and the series must diverge. If you find the math content on Zach's Lab helpful, click on the Zach's Lab logo on the right to browse playlists and subscribe to the channel. I produce dozens of new videos per month, and subscribing is the easiest way to find new content. Thanks for watching.